Here's a popular question here in the office. Why can't I get my GLP-1 agonist medications like Monjaro, Wegovi, Zepbound, uh, Ozempic? What's going on, doc? So what's going on? Why can't you get your medications? Why can't you get your semaglutide, your tozipatide, Manjaro, Wegovi? What's happening with these medications? My name is Dr. G and I'm an internal medicine physician here in Hollywood, Florida. And I specialize in lifestyle modification changing, coaching and consulting on weight loss modifications and weight loss patients. Let's talk about what's going on with uh, these medications, these GLP-1 agonist medications, which have changed the landscape for both obesity and for um, diabetes, how we treat them here in, um, in, in the medical space. First off, I'd like to point out that um, there's this ongoing debate and this ongoing struggle um, amongst the you know, patients and the masses that, uh, well, you know, meds are being taken from one group to be given to another group for whatever reason, be it, you know, aesthetics or just obesity or something that they could just change by just turning on and off <laughs> that, that hunger mechanism that we all have. And some people just have a problem with turning that, that hunger mechanism off. I will admit some of it is, you know, probably a, a, a problem with motivation and willpower, but a lot of it is physiologic. So that has driven the weight loss industry. That's driven us as medical doctors and clinicians to look for solutions to solve this weight loss issue. But is it all because of just looks and aesthetics and how people wanna look on the beach and you know, we're in beautiful Miami down here and aesthetics is big, but is, it, is that it? I don't think so. Um, the, the science says no, there's a lot more to it. And as a matter of fact, um, if you look on the American Diabetes Association website, you look on the National Institute for Diabetes and, and Kidney Diseases, they have um, a big part of their initiative and a big part of their funding goes to research in obesity. So then, okay, well, there must be a link between you know kidney disease and obesity, and there must be a link between diabetes and obesity, and there must be a link between diabetes and kidneys, since you know those two are um, connected in the same in, in in an institute that provides research funding for all of those all of those um, diseases. There is a link, and it's provable, and it's been proven, and it's we we know this to be true. We know that obesity. Number one in the United States of America is a huge problem. First off, there is, on this channel we talk about, I talk about giving you information, you know, factual information that you could look up. I'm not, you know, I don't pull these numbers out of the, you know, out of the sky. Um, and, and in other places, I don't, um, I don't sugarcoat anything. So if I see something, if I see a trend, or if I see a comment in one of the comment sections of one of my videos, um, and it's it's something that's just tr provably false, or it, it seems as though um, this person or this comment is coming from a place of n not understanding the facts or the landscape of medicine or the, the landscape of what's going on with the, the medications that we're talking about or whatever disease we're talking about, I'm going to take time out and I'm going to address it. And, you know, as you can see today, we're, we're filming in the daytime. Usually I film in the evening. It's quieter than, you know, the, the, <laughs> the staff is... Hopefully, they don't come and knock in now. But you know, I need to address this now as it's, as it's front of um, mind for me. And I've been thinking about this on the drive-in. So obesity is a huge problem. Overweight, the, the percentage of Americans that are overweight in this country is approaching seventy percent. The percentage of patients that are obese is about thirty-nine percent. That's a lot, right? We're talking about two-thirds that are overweight and at least one third or you know, around one third are, are, are obese. And then we look at obesity as it relates to, let's just do diabetes. I'm not gonna, gonna, not gonna run into um, 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 kidney disease because uh, primarily these medications that we're talking about, the GLP-1 agonists that are in shortage, are, are, were first approved, the, the class was first approved for diabetes, so let's just stick to that, right? But there's also a link and there's also an indication for these medications and they're being used already by, uh, by kidney doctors for kidney disease. That's, you know, that'll probably blow your mind if you had, didn't know that. And, and they are actually p pulling from the pool of what's available as well. So um, just saying, hey, you know, why are these people trying to, you know, they're taking my obesity medications and I need it for, you know, my loved one or myself for obesity and well, I'm sorry, sorry for diabetes and, and you know, we, we're not getting our medications. It's not, that's false, right? Because there's another group, the, the kidney disease, the kidney uh, failure patients, CKD patients are also um, on the list of, people who are pooling, pulling from the available 
pool from the, the, the manufacturers Novo Nordisk and, and, and Eli Lilly in the case of Munjaro and Wegovi. But anyhow, um, for kidney disease, for, sorry, for obesity and, um, or you know, overweight and obesity for, uh, related to diabetes, let's talk about when you're diagnosed. When patients are diagnosed with diabetes, um, a, the ADA, the American Diabetes Association, when they're uh, uh, diagnosed with pre-diabetes, I'm sorry, they're already, the, uh, 90% of these patients are overweight or, you know, or obese, at least overweight. 90% of the patients who are diagnosed with pre-diabetes at diagnosis are overweight. Jeez, there, there has to be some sort of connection between obesity and, you know, and, and, and di pre-diabetes or diabetes, right? And for people who have been diagnosed and are chronically diagnosed with uh, um, uh, uh, diabetes, you know, walking around more than, you know, three months, they already know, di doctors already told them, they've probably already started treatment, um, been told all the, the risk factors and everything. Those patients are still at least uh, about 60% of those patients, 65% of those patients are still overweight. Classified overweight, 27% BMI or greater, and obese is 30% or greater. So again, 90% of the patients who are diagnosed at diagnosis of prediabetes are obese. And then those who have already been diagnosed with, with, uh, with diabetes or prediabetes and have been presumably treated or told, you know, lifestyle modifications and everything they need to do, they're still overweight and they're still, you know, prediabetic or diabetic. That's those, you know, 60% of those people. That's, that's huge. That's big. The, the obesity appears to be a major factor um, in pushing that disease process. Again, uh, we are, you know, the, 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 we, we are talking about obesity, treating obesity earlier, because, you know, some of these people are taking it for weight loss and they're not diabetic yet. Eventually, these people, if they stay on this track, will end up in that diabetic or pre-diabetic bucket, which then will drive kidney disease, which may then will drive heart, hypertension and cardiovascular disease, which we already know kidney diabetes or pre-diabetes, well, diabetes specifically has been linked inextricably and is, there's no doubt about it with cardiovascular disease, um, renovascular disease, and cerebrovascular disease. So that means strokes, that means heart attacks, that means kidney failure. Um, neuro, uh, neurovascular disease, I mean, it, with, the, with the periphery, neur neuropathy, and, and which ends up in, you know, um, um, amputations of toes and fingers and, and limbs, um, which ends up in morbid morbidity. And all of those things cause and push mortality. So not only are people getting sicker um, and having car events, which puts stress on the healthcare, in the healthcare system here in the United States, which we know doesn't need any more stress. Um, it also causes people to have terrible, terrible lives. <laughs> you know, people have, you know, problems with, you know, just doing, you know, enjoying their life because they have these, you know, these diseases and these complications associated with the disease, not to mention they die earlier than they should. So I have a problem when people when I see comments or I see people come or if people come to me directly and they say, hey, doc, you know, you're pushing this medication and it's it's taking um, uh, medications away from, you know, from, you know, a family member or myself. And I don't get it because you're giving it or you're you're pushing it or you're you're teaching that the GLP-1 agonist medications should be used for obesity. First of all, it's FDA approved for obesity. And we I just talked about how obesity drives all of those other things. So obesity should be treated to prevent the diabetes. You should be treated for obesity because you're probably in that bucket of the 90 or 60 percent, where you know if you are if you're diabetic, you're probably in that 90 to 60 percent. There's a 60 percent chance that you're in that bucket of overweight or more if you're chronically, um, if you've been treated, you've been diagnosed with diabetes for more than you know two or three months. So, and I'm sure you've been told that you know lifestyle modifications is necessary and losing weight is necessary. And for whatever reason, you haven't done that. Um, hopefully, it's because you know, you just can't get past that, that food noise. You can't get yourself to, to quiet that down, to get your exercise together, get your nutrition together, and lose the weight. And that is exactly what the GLP-1 agonists do for people who are obese. They happen to be, Munjaro and um, Manjaro and Ozempic happen to be very good, very good at glycemic control as well. Now there's a third player in the group, Sixenda, who is strictly weight loss. And that medication is, you know, um, not good at, not very good at, at uh, diabetes control. So we have three actually for obesity. We have um, Saxenda, which is liraglutide. We have uh, Wegovi, which is semaglutide. And we have Zepbound, which is tirzipatide. So three have been FDA approved for the indication of obesity, 
greater than 30% with no, no, no comorbid diseases like that put you at high risk for, for death, like, you know, hypercholesterolemia, hyper, um, uh, dyslipidemia, um, renal disease, uh, heart disease, established heart disease, um, diabetes, of course, um, hypertension. These are all m diseases associated with higher risk of, uh, of complications. And if you have a BMI of 27 or greater, also it is, re is uh, recommended to uh, start a GLP-1 agonist or it's, it's indicated. Recommendations always, lifestyle modifications. And that's why here at my office, I teach and I coach lifestyle modifications. I just wanted, I just wanted to get this on you know, get this, this message out there. Um, it's, it's difficult. I get it. I get it. You're diabetic and you want very good control. You want your Manjaro. You want your, um, you want your Ozempic if you need it, right? These medications should not be deprived from anybody, but it's, 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 it's problematic. And it's probably not true to say that the group that is taking, the reason why you can't get the medication is because another group which it has an indication that are obese or that are overweight with one of these conditions um, are taking the medication away from you. Let's try to focus on what the real problem is. It's hard to say, right? The manufacturers of, of the two best medications for obesity and also apparently for, for um, glucose control, um, Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk, Novo Disc or Novo, Novo Nordisk, um, are, been, have been, KG at best to let us know exactly what the supply chain problem is with the, the actual branded medication, the one that comes in the pen. Um, the, the, ben, the one that comes in the pen with the, the, the actual name says across it emblazoned with the, the logo of the, of the company and the name Ozempic and the name Monjaro. Those are in short supply. Um, even as, as myself, I go through, you go through your insurance, I have a patient here who's diabetic or clearly um, overweight, but let's talk, talk about the diabetics who would definitely benefit from this. Maybe they have a, you know, side effects with other medications or are uncontrolled on the other medications. And this medication I believe will help control their weight and also control the diabetes phenomenally. Um, I, we, we put the, we put the, uh, the order in. Uh, it's always a problem uh, to get, first off, to get the, the, the approval from the insurance companies because the approval the approval changes here in 2025, 2024 have changed in January. They've made, you know, significant changes as to the thing, the, the check off the list of the bureaucracy, the paperwork and all the things that, you know, doctors have to check off. The patients have tried different medications. They have failed different medications. They really have this, this, this type of um, diabetes. They have these numbers and we have to send all that in. It has to take it. It takes a long time if it gets approved. And let's say it does get approved. The approval goes back to the pharmacy and now the pharmacy can't get it. So even if I did, um, you do get it approved. Let's say, you know, the, there's no issue with obesity and all that good stuff. We do get it approved. Finally, first off, there's a lot of red tape with your insurance to get it. We finally get it. Now the, the pharmacy can't get it. And the pharmacy can't get it because the manufacturer, the manufacturers are having a tough time keeping up with the demand. Now I find it very hard to believe that a company, that companies like these are, you know, these are billion dollar companies. These are, you know, huge companies have been around. They've, They've hit on other medications in the past. These are, you know, these are these are big boys, right? These are these are big players in in the industry. It's I find it hard to believe that they would leave money on the table um, from a business standpoint. You know, let's separate the business from the medical the medical part, the medical piece. But from a business standpoint, they have shareholders and they want to make money. That's what they're in business for. And um, I find it hard to believe that if they could they wouldn't make a, 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 a gajillion vials or, 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 or pens to treat both the obesity crowd because they're the ones who, who basically put the trials out there to get these things approved for that new indication and treat the diabetes trial and uh, the, the diabetes bucket and also treat the other buckets that are coming out. The heart disease that's going to be, you know, fully, fully FDA approved very shortly. Kidney disease is getting pushed to be to be approved very shortly, and they are now recruiting for trials for obesity in patients who have osteoarthritis. Arthritis, weight on the joints, causing pain, uh, more and more pain, causing patients to go to opioids. And we know we you know the country is moving to a position of you know taking more and more patients, being more restrictive with opioids, thankfully, um, and getting those things, getting those medications off the street and weight loss. We we we, we teach that to everyone. And it's so hard to get the weight off because you, you can't do the workouts. You can't really work out very well, very much. Can't get very active because your knees hurt, your hips hurt. So we get the weight off of the hips by lose, using these medications. I'm thinking that's what's going. They're going to try, and they're recruiting for that now. It's going to work. 
it's going to get an indication for that as well, because we know the, the medication is already safe. It's been safe when, since 2005 when they came out, and it's going to continue to be safe. It's been you know almost 20 years that these medications have been in the market. Yes, we do have um, uh, some side effects out there, but none of them are, are to the point where you know they're life uh, um, um, threatening for a, a, a you know, even a small minority. It's very, very tiny amongst uh, in, 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 in re with respect to how many patients have been treated with these medications uh, that I don't see unless something happens in the future where we find out, well, you know what, the heck it causes some, you know, God forbid it causes some, you know, some sort of gastric cancer or something, which again, the medications have been out in the market and being used for the last 20 years. If this was going to show up, we probably, probably will have, would have seen it already. So the biggest side effects that, you know, you know, that are out there, which are still in a small, small minority of patients that are most concerning is, you know, this gastroparesis, which happens in, typically happens in patients who are super, super sensitive or have had diabetes or diabetic, have an already neuropathy at baseline and start on the medication to control that diabetes. And then it promotes you know, gastroparesis. Those are the patients that, I, I, you know, I've seen in the literature that are coming up with, you know, these types of, um, these types of uh, severe, severe and, and, and bad enough that the patient's like, you know what, I can't do this medication, right? Now you do have your nausea and vomiting. Um, I've seen that, um, you know, I've seen that in the office here. And typically those patients, when coached again, not to overeat, do well. Right. Not, you know, typically not, that's not a reason why most people will quit. Right. So in summary, um, I just wanted to put a little bit of, you know, just just chill everybody out. <laughs> and, 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 and it's not, you know, it's not specifically to any one person in the comment session. I just wanted to educate the whole everybody who comes to my channel about this issue. Right. I don't want, you know, the you know, patients to be sitting across from each other um, and, and one has diabetes and the other one is obese and both are vying for this, or they both want the same medication, and one is looking at the other like, man, you are doing me dirty. Um, they're not, right? Um, the medication is indicated for obesity. It's indicated for diabetes. We both deserve the medication, and you both deserve the education about the medication as to what it does, what is indicated for, what the side effect profile is, and why you aren't able to get it. Thought I'd just drop that uh, here today. If you'd like some uh, lifestyle modification coaching, go ahead and take a look at the link below. Uh, I do that in a group sessions or I can do it one-to-one. -one. Uh, if you'd like more information, check out the link. See you soon.